The Coming of Lou, a Celtic wonder tale, retold by Ella Young. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recorded by Jennifer Pratt. The Coming of Lou Mananan MacLear, who rules the ocean, took the little sun-god Luch in his arms and held him up so he could see the whole of Ireland with the waves whispering about it everywhere. Say farewell to the mountains and rivers and the big trees and the flowers and the grass, O oh, Lou, for you are coming away with me. The child stretched out his hands and cried, Goodbye, mountains and flowers and rivers. Some day I will come back to you. Then Mananan wrapped Lou in his cloak and stepped on to his boat, the ocean sweeper. And without oar or sail, they journeyed over the sea till they crossed the waters at the edge of the world and came to the country of Mananan. A beautiful country, shining with the colours of the dawn. Lou stayed in that country with Mananan, he raced the waves along the strand. He gathered apples sweeter than the honey from trees with crimson blossoms. And wonderful birds came to play with him. Mananan's daughter Niav took him through woods where there were milk-white deer with horns of gold and black-maned lions with spotted panthers and unicorns that shone like silver and strange beasts that no one ever heard of. And all the animals were glad to see him, and he played with them and called them by their names. Every day he grew taller and stronger and more beautiful, but he did not any day ask Mananan to take him back to Ireland. Every night, when darkness had come into the sky, Mananan wrapped himself in his mantle of power, and crossed the sea and walked all round Ireland, stepping from rock to rock. No one saw him because his mantle made him invisible, but he saw everything, and knew that trouble had found the dead Inanans. The ugly, misshapen folk of the Fomor had come into Ireland and spread themselves over the country like a pestilence. They had stolen the cauldron of plenty and carried it away to their own land, where Balor of the evil eye reigned. They had taken the spear of victory also. And the only one of the four great jewels of sovereignty remaining to the dead Inanans was the Stone of Destiny. It was hidden deep in the earth of Ireland, and because of it the Fomorians could not altogether conquer the country nor could they destroy the dead Inanans. Though they drove them from their pleasant palaces and hunted them through the glens and valleys like outlaws. Mananan himself had the fourth jewel, the Sword of Light. He kept it and waited. When Luch was full grown, Mananan said to him, it is three times seven years as mortals count time since I brought you to Tirnanog, and in that time I have never given you a gift. Today I will give you a gift. He brought out the Sword of Light and gave it to Lu, and when Lu took it in his hands he remembered how he had cried to the hills and rivers of Ireland, Some day I will come back to you. And he said to Mananan, I want to go back to Ireland. You will not find joyousness there, O oh Lou, or the music of harp strings, or feasting. The dead Nanans are shorn of their strength. Ogmai, their champion, carries logs to warm Fomorian hearths. Angus wanders like an outcast. And Nuada... The king has but one done where those who had once the lordship of the world meet in secret like hunted folk. 
I have a good sword, said Luke. I will go to my kinsfolk. Oh, Luke, said Mananan, they have never known you. Will you leave me and Niamh and this land where sorrow has never touched you for the sake of stranger kinsfolk? Luke answered, I remember the hills and the woods and the rivers of Ireland. And though all my kinsfolk were gone from it, and the sea covered everything but the tops of the mountains, I would go back. You have the hardiness that wins victory, said Mananan. I will set you on my own white horse and give you companions as high-hearted as yourself. I will put my helmet on your head and my breastplate over your heart. You shall drive the Fomorians out of Ireland as chaff is driven by the wind. When Luch put on the helmet of Mananan, brightness shot into the sky, as if a new sun had risen. When he put on the breastplate, a great wave of music swelled and sounded through Tirnanagh. When he mounted the white horse, a mighty wind swept past him, and lo, the companions Mananan had promised rode beside him. The horses were white like his, and gladness that age cannot weather shone in their faces. When they came to the sea that is about Tirnanagh, the little crystal waves lifted themselves up to look at Luch, and when he and his comrades sped over the sea as lightly as blown foam, the little waves followed them till they came to Ireland, and the three great waves of Ireland thundered a welcome, the wave of Thoth, the wave of Ruri, and the long, snow-white, foaming wave of Kleena. No one saw the fairy host coming into Ireland, at the place where their horses leapt from the sea to land, there was a great wood of pine trees. Let us go into the woods, said Luke, and they rode between the tall, straight tree trunks into the silent heart of the wood. Rest here, said Luke, till morning. I will go to the dun of Nuada and get news of my kinsfolk. He put his shining armor from him and wrapped himself in a dark cloak and went on foot to the dun of Nuada. He struck the brazen door and the guardian of the door spoke to him from within. What do you seek? My way into the dun. No one enters here who has not his craft. What can you do? I have the craft of a carpenter. We have a carpenter within. He is Luchde, son of Luched. I have the craft of a smith. We have a smith within. Call him of the three new ways of working. I have the craft of a champion. We have a champion within. He is Ogmai himself. I have the craft of a harper. We have a harper within. Even Afghan. Son of Bicklemus. The men of the three gods choose him in the fairy hills. I have the craft of a poet and historian. We have a poet and historian within. Even in, son of Ethaman. I have the craft of a wizard. We have many wizards and magicians within. I have the craft of a physician. We have a physician within, even Dian Kecht. I have the craft of a cupbearer. We have nine cupbearers within. 
I have the craft of a brazier. We have a brazier within. Even Credna curd. Go hence and ask your king if he has within any one man who can do all these things. If he has, I will not seek to enter. The guardian of the door hurried into Noada. O oh, king, he said, the most wonderful youth in the world is waiting outside your door tonight. He seeks admittance as the Ildana, the master of every craft. Let him come in, said King Noada. Luke came into the dun. Ogmai, the champion, took a good look at him. He thought him young and slender, and was minded to test him. There was a great stone before the seat of the king. It was flat and round, and fourscore yoke of oxen could not move it. Ogmai stooped and lifted the stone. He cast it through the door so that it crossed the fosse, which was round the dun. That was his challenge to the Eldana. It is a good champion cast, said Lou. I will better it. He went outside, lifted the stone and cast it back, not through the door, but through the strong wall of the dun so that it fell in the place where it had lain before Ogmai lifted it. Your work cast is better than mine, said Ogmai. Sit in the seat of the champion with your face to the king. Luch drew his hand over the wall. It became whole as before. He sat in the champion's seat. Let chess be brought, said the king. They played, and Lou won all the games, so that thereafter it was passed into a proverb to make the crow of Lou. Truly you are the Eldana, said Nuada. I would fain hear music of your making. But I have no harp to offer you. I see a kingly harp within reach of your hand, said Lou. That is the harp of the doctor. No one can bring music from that harp but himself. When he plays it on the four seasons, spring, summer, autumn, and winter pass over the earth. I will play on it, said Luch. The harp was given to him. Luch played the music of Joey, and outside the dun the birds began to sing as though it were morning, and wonderful crimson flowers sprang through the grass, flowers that trembled with delight and swayed and touched each other with a delicate fairy ring and as of silver bells. Inside the dun a subtle sweetness of laughter filled the hearts of everyone. It seemed to them that they had never known gladness till that night. Luch played the music of sorrow. The wind moaned outside. Where the grass and flowers had been, there was a dark sea of moving waters. The dead Ananans within the dun bowed their heads on their hands and wept as they had never wept for any sorrow. Lou played the music of peace, and outside there felt silently a strange snow. Flake by flake, it settled on the earth, and changed to starry dew. Flake by flake, the quiet of the land of the silver fleece settled in the hearts and minds of Nuada and his people. They closed their eyes and slept, each in his seat. Luch put the harp from him and stole out of the dun. The snow was still falling outside. It settled on his dark cloak and shone like silver scales. It settled on the thick curls of his hair and shone like jeweled fire. It filled the night about him with white radiance. He went back to his companions. The sun had risen in the sky when the dead Inanans woke in Nuada's dun. 
They were light-hearted and joyous, and it seemed to them that they had dreamed overnight a strange, beautiful dream. The Fomorians have not taken the sun out of the sky, said Nuada. Let us go to the hill of Usna and send to our scattered comrades that we may make a stand against our enemies. They took up their weapons and went to the hill of Usna, and they were not long upon it when a band of Fomorian devastators came on them. The Fomorians scoffed among themselves when they saw how few the dead Inanans were and how ill-prepared for fighting. Behold, they cried, what mighty kings are today upon Usna, the hill of sovereignty. Come down, O kings, and bow yourselves before your masters. We will not bow ourselves before you, said Nuada, for ye are ugly and vile, and lords neither of us nor of Ireland. With hoarse cries the Fomorians fell on the dead Inanans, but Nuada and his folk held together and withstood them as well as they were able. Scarcely had the weapons clashed when a light appeared in the horizon, and a sound of mighty battle trumpets shook the air. The light was so white that no one could look at it, and great rose-red streamers shot from it into the sky. It is a second sunrise, said the Fomorians. It is the deliverer, said the dead Inanans. Out of the light came the glorious company of warriors from Tirnanog. Luch was leading them. He had the helmet of Mananan on his head, the breastplate of Mananan over his heart, and the great white horse of Mananan beneath him. The sword of light was bare in his hands. He fell on the Fomorians as a sea eagle falls on her prey, as lightning flashes out of the clear sky. Before him and his companions, they were destroyed as stubble is destroyed by fire. He held his hand when only nine of them remained alive. Bow yourselves, he said, before the king, Nuada and before the dead Nanans, for they are your lords, and the lords of Ireland. And go hence to Balor of the evil eye, and tell him and his misshapen brood that the dead Nanans have taken their own again, and they will wage war against the Fomorians till there is not one left to darken the earth with his shadow." The nine Fomorians bowed themselves before the king, Nuara, and before the dead Inanans, and before Luch Lauvauda, the Ildana, and they arose and carried his message to Balor of the Evil Eye, king of the Fomorians. End of the Coming of Lu, a Celtic Wonder Tale by Ella Young Read by Jennifer Pratt